Welcome. This is a Grab the Mic webinar from the Beam Exchange, uh, a global platform for everything to do with sharing information, knowledge, and experiences about market systems development. And today we are going to be talking about a key feature of MSD programs, which is the, the extended and often quite detailed inception phases that programs have. And uh, I've got a a set of very interesting and engaging speakers who are going to um, talk to you for about half an hour and then they're going to be we're going to have plenty of time for questions and answers so please make use of the uh, the chat facility to introduce yourselves and the Q&A facility for putting questions to the speakers um, we'll come back to how to do that in a minute but um, otherwise, I'm very privileged to hand over to Clara Garcia Parra from the Canopy Lab. She's going to be actually moderating this work, this uh, web, this webinar, and uh, she will introduce each of the the main speakers. Clara, That's right. thank you so much, Mike, and welcome everyone. We're delighted to have you here with us. Um, the agenda for today. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've already welcomed everyone and we hope many more of you can join us. Um, then we're going to go over how this webinar was incepted and the pun is intended there. Uh, we will introduce uh, the panelists. Then we will have five questions that will be open to all our panelists to share their different perspectives and opinions. And we will hand over to all of you for a Q&A session. And thank you to all of you who already submitted some questions in advance because they were really helpful in helping us uh, fine tune the questions that we asked the panelists. So very briefly, the two main projects that we're gonna be talking about who are at, that are at the origin of this webinar are Reconomy and Transforming Market Systems in Honduras. So Reconomy is an inclusive and green economic development program of the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency. Its main goal is to enable women and youth to benefit from economic opportunities by increasing their income and taking up decent and green jobs. It works across 12 countries in the Western Balkans and the Eastern Partnership region, and it had a two and a half year long inception phase. Um, it has recently kickstarted the main phase of implementation. And uh, the reason how that we came to know the project quite well was that we did a case study. I put a screenshot of it here, uh, where we went over the lessons that we could learn from the inception phase on how it used that phase to navigate the complexity of its setup. Um, the, in parallel, we were also working at the Canopy Lab um, um, with a project called Transforming Market Systems um, in Honduras. This is a US state funded project that fosters competitive, resilient and inclusive market systems that provide increased economic opportunities for youth, women and marginalized groups. Um, it works across a range of sectors, including tourism, agribusiness and entrepreneurship, as well as labor market intermediation and business enabling environment. And it had a 10 month long inception phase. Right now, the project is halfway through implementation. So um, just as Mike mentioned, please during the session, if you have any questions, put them on the Q&A. If you just wanna say hi to people you may recognize, use the chat. We will monitor the q and I'm not sure we will be able to monitor the chat function. Um, and very briefly, before we start with the questions, I wanted to introduce you to our distinguished panel. So Elene is a market systems development practitioner who has over 10 years of experience in applying MSD to inclusive economic development. And she's currently Reconomy's operational manager. Jorge is a project management specialist who has 18 years of experience working in the development field. He joined USAID Honduras 13 year, in 2013, and he is currently the contracting officer representative for the TMS activity, the transforming market systems um, activity in Honduras. And Holly is a seasoned MSD consultant and a managing partner at the Canopy Lab. She has over 15 years of experience bringing technical advice to a variety of projects across multiple areas, including trade, agriculture, urban development, and women's economic environment. Uh, and she has seen her fair share of inception phases, which I'm sure she will be able to share with us. So as you can see, the idea is that through these three perspectives, that of an implementer, that of a donor, and that of a consultant, we're going to get a wide range of viewpoints on what inception phases can actually achieve in the context of MSD programs. With, uh, without further ado, 
let's just dive right in. So to Elene and Jorge, my first question is um, starts with a statement. So we know that both Reconomy and TMS had unusually long inception phases for what usually um, the MSD, an MSD program would go for. How did the decision to have them last longer than usual come about? And what were the implications in terms of transitioning to the implementation phase? Elena, maybe we start with you. Thank you, Clara. Thanks a lot for a nice introduction. And I'm very happy to be here and talk on behalf of Reconomy uh, that uh, started um, with uh, a very lean uh, team of 10 people. Uh, and I must say that the inception phase, uh, the way it was designed, uh, a bit longer than usual, maybe was the right uh, choice uh, to make. Um, so the inception phase of Reconomy was initially planned uh, as a 22 months uh, inception, uh, but uh, along the way it was also extended several times. And there are reasons for that. Uh, Reconomy is operating in quite a um, um, fragile uh, context of Eastern Partnership and Western Balkans. Uh, and it started um, in the middle of COVID pandemic, which was July 2020. Um, and then uh, after that, it was followed by the war in Armenia and Azerbaijan, and last but not the least, uh, the Russian invasion on Ukraine. And all of these contextual changes had an impact on the programming because team indeed needed to travel, needed to do the regional market systems development analysis, which was probably not something very typical for MSD programs because usually Helvetas is an experience of implementing uh, and market systems development programs in countries, but this was unusual in its own setup. There was no blueprint on how to um, operationalize a regional market systems programs with the focus on mainstreaming environment and climate change, and therefore uh, a bit uh, of a time and space uh, probably was necessary for the team to launch. Um, and in a way, the inception phase of Reconomy was not a standard inception phase. Um, the time was dedicated to doing the market systems development, um, uh, market systems analysis in the region. It was also used uh, for uh, setting up systems and processes that would fit the regional uh, setup and concept. Uh, it was used to engaging the partners in the region uh, and also starting some pilots to, on one hand, prove uh, the concept that would be used uh, in the main phase of economy, uh, but also understand how the regional uh, market systems could be applied together with the local partners and who do we need to engage uh, with uh, to uh, operationalize the program. And last but not the least, uh, it was uh, a program that was uh, managed by a very lean team of 10 people who are based in different countries. Initially, Reconomy had representatives in five uh, countries, and these 10 people were trying to make uh, the program for uh, working in uh, 12 countries uh, work. And later, I will uh, introduce some changes that happened along the way. Thanks. Thank you very much, Eleni. Jorge, over to you. How was it for TMS? Good morning, everyone. So in our case, for TMS, it was more about, it wasn't so much about deciding about the right length or in the, or, or an internal conversation about the length of the activity uh, of the inception phase. It was more about the, the breakthrough was to have an inception phase altogether, because we were not used to doing that in the USA Honduras mission prior to TMS. Um, we we knew that we wanted an activity that was going to have a, a significant part of its portfolio working in agriculture because we are a feed the future focused country, but we also knew that we that we needed to work in other economic sectors and we wanted to go into the process of selecting those sectors as clear you know with which uh, with as many, as few preconceived ideas of what we were gonna be doing so that we could actually determine that with our stakeholders uh, in Honduras. Um, so, you know, we, we also let the industry know when we released a request for proposals that we wanted um, any proposals and in the inception phase to look for opportunities to implement uh, pilot interventions in areas where we could see opportunities for uh, innovation, a higher rate of inclusivity for the population groups that we were prioritizing, namely uh, women and, and young Hondurans. Um, and we were very, 
we were very encouraged by the fact that this was extremely well received with our local stakeholders. You know, we heard from many longstanding partners that, you know, in the past when we were um, issuing uh, very prescriptive statements of work and, and RFPs that uh, especially local partners would were really looking forward to the opportunity to not all not only working with AID and, and our projects, but also being able to influence the type of interventions and the areas where those interventions were being carried out. And we heard this from private sector, government, academia, from all over the place. Hmm. Thank you very much. So it sounds like in um, economy's case, it was context driven, but also because of the um, experimental nature of the setup and a little bit similar as well for Honduras where the mission was trying out a new modality where there was maybe more uncertainty than in other contexts so this inception phase served a purpose in both cases thank you both um, the next question is for um, Holly and Jorge again pretty straightforward in your opinion, what role can inception phases play for enabling innovation throughout project implementation? Thanks, Clara. Great to be here. And as you said at the top, I've had the opportunity to advise several MSD programs during their inception phase. I've also had the wonderful experience of being a staff member, uh, a technical staff member during an inception phase on the Elan RDSA program. And for me, the inception phase is all about setting the tone for the projects. And in terms of enabling innovation specifically, I find that it's really important to use the inception phase to both communicate and demonstrate that risk-taking and even failing is part of the process. And this is particularly true for projects that have a large number of staff who are new to MSD and may be unfamiliar or even uncomfortable with these concepts. The scale of impact associated with MSD programs can be daunting for many staff. It was for me when I started. Um, and getting them comfortable with the process, the vision, and the challenges that you're going to face along the way is critical. Another way to encourage innovation during the inception phase is to balance the research focus with action. Typically, MSA, uh, typically market systems analyses dominate the inception phase. And this is of course important, but it can lead to a lot of staff working on their computers instead of getting out and talking with market actors and potential partners. And I find that MSD projects, which incorporate a few action research activities, along with the MSA, benefit from the energy that surrounds the deal making of action research. And also again, for new people who are new to MSD, it gives them a chance to see what's possible in terms of deals and partnerships with the private sector. I worked the project in Ethiopia. That was a good example of this in practice. The team was largely plotting away on some big MSAs and pursuing action research in the finance and poultry sectors. And the lessons from the action research were cycled back into the MSAs and vice versa. Also, these, these action research during the inception phase created a good momentum leading the team into the implementation phase. Back to you. So in the case of TMS, you know, we needed to find the strike the right balance between, you know, acknowledging the fact that we're looking at implementing these projects from a donor perspective, which means that there's, in our case, there's accountability to the U.S. Congress for the uh, results that we're getting from the from the money that's be, that is being invested in in an activity like TMS, um, while at the same time looking for, you know, looking to develop a, a culture where you're really putting a premium on innovation. So from that perspective, you know, acknowledging that balance, we tried to to instill from the from the inception phase forward, kind of like a startup mentality where uh, we we adopted a mantra a mantra early on that was fail cheap, fail fast. Uh, let's try these pilots on and, and let's really look at developing uh, you know what are going to be the 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 ways in which you can tell if the process even if you're not seeing the results that you're going through the right process and that you're seeing encouraging signs that results are to come down the line 
so that if you don't see, you know, we, we expect our results to come in year two, sometimes in year three, uh, but finding, uh, you know, the, the right tools to make sure that we were on the right path so that if we weren't, we could pivot or we could uh, stop the, the partnership altogether and recognize that there's as much to be learned from those early failures uh, than from the successes. You know, some of the most successful in, uh, partnerships that we have right now are iterations of initial pilots that were not successful or even uh, completely different interventions with the same partners because sometimes it takes a couple of tries before you find the, the, the sweet spot for where our interest as a donor intersects with the interest of a private sector actor, for example. You know, that whole concept of, of shared value. Thank you very much. Um, so really interesting points where it sounds like the inception phase can play a role of setting the tone for the project and the team in terms of managing expectations around results, but also building the capacity of team members. And it's a good opportunity to combine research and pilots to inform implementation. At least those are two key takeaways for me beyond the fail cheap and fail fast, which I'm going to adopt moving forward. <laughs> um, so my next question is for Elene, and it's not an easy one, but what lessons can you share, share from Reconomy's two and a half year inception phase? Yeah, I agree. It's not an easy one. And probably in a sense of like, which one do I want to focus on? Because the case study indeed is looking at a lot of lessons that the economy has uh, generated uh, in two and a half year inception. And we continue to do so because um, uh, managing a regional program in such a fragile context, as I was mentioning before, does take a lot of motivation, a lot of agility and adaptability of the team. And here in this um, part, probably I would focus on maybe three key areas. So one is what does it mean to work regionally? Uh, then uh, uh, managing the teams remotely. And also what are the systems and processes that um, an organizational setup would require to actually manage the program um, uh, remotely uh, in the two regions? Uh, so when we talk about uh, working regionally is that uh, the inception phase of economy was uh, looking at implementing the program through implementing partners. Uh, that did mean for us that we had to bring our implementing partners to the same level of understanding of market systems development framework. Uh, and did uh, also mean uh, a lot of investment in terms of capacity building and training. And that for us, on one hand, is um, a great opportunity to have a lot of um, shared understanding uh, in the development community. But on the other hand, it does take uh, some time. So in the main phase, then we have had to rethink uh, the implementation modality and maybe balance it a bit out and continue implementing uh, some uh, projects uh, with implementing partners and some um, ourselves. And then when it comes to managing the team remotely, we like we are amazed. Yes, we are now the team of 23 people who are based in 10 different countries. And for us, the big question is how to keep the team motivated to continue to do uh, an amazing job. Um, because sometimes it might feel lonely uh, when you are, for example, one person um, sitting in one country in Helvetas office, but then still being a little bit uh, alone. So we do invest into the leadership capacities of our teams um, and also uh, a bit into the conflict sensitive uh, project management, because indeed we are all with the different backgrounds, cultural, um, experiential, and it is important that we continue to have this team spirit um, as a team uh, to be successful in implementing economy. And then when it comes to systems and processes for us, it was something innovative to mainstream environment and climate change. So we did have to look into how are we selecting the sectors. We did have to look at what are the systems and processes that allow us to mainstream. Actually, what does it mean? Uh, and uh, compared to the inception phase now, for example, in the main phase, we uh, have included uh, the green uh, skills and green jobs indicators in our log frame, which was not the case uh, before in the inception, uh, to put a bit of more emphasis on actually measuring the green uh, uh, and inclusive uh, change. Um, and um, last but not the least, uh, 
monitoring and results measurement system. Um, for economy, it means uh, collecting information, capturing results locally from the market actors, from implementing partners in different countries. And in the inception phase, it was only one person who would then uh, bring the data to uh, central uh, data system. And we did uh, realize that that might not be enough. Uh, it's not uh, possible to capture all the results with the limited human resources, which probably is not a uh, novelty, but still uh, on the regional market systems development program. Program. This was something um, um, piloted for the first time. So uh, what we uh, did is we um, invested a lot of time into the IT solution uh, that would allow us to capture some of the data real time, uh, increase our capacities in the team, uh, maybe not so significantly, but still we have two more people that would be helping us in aggregating the results. And also we have uh, um, included uh, the additional external support for uh, being able to measure the impact uh, on the regional level. And um, yeah, so I would say that uh, with these learnings, two and a half years probably are not enough, but uh, nonetheless, we value all our learnings and we're looking forward uh, into the future. Thanks. Thanks so much, Eleni. Very interesting. And um, if we haven't yet, we will share a link to the inception phase case study if anyone is interested. Uh, but moving forward to our second to last question um, for Jorge and Holly, and here I would like Jorge to start. What are, in your opinion, the common traits of successful inception phases from your experience in TMS? Um, and then maybe Holly can take the second part in terms of what makes for a bad inception phase. So Jorge, over to you. Thank you, Clara. Uh, yeah, so I think that one, one thing that we did early on and, and that we knew that we wanted to do, uh, I, I believe we actually wrote it uh, into the request for proposals, is that we wanted uh, whoever was implementing the contract to make sure that they took the time and that they invested resources in terms of time, uh, staff, um, to have kind of like a market systems bootcamp at the very beginning of the of the implementation of TMS, so that we could go into the project with a shared understanding within the team of what a market systems approach meant. You know, we knew that. Um, it was a very novel concept for Honduras, not just for 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 USA, but even in the you know within the development uh, community here in in Honduras, there were many players that have implemented MSD projects elsewhere, but not necessarily here. And um, we wanted people to have a shared understanding of what uh, systemic change meant, what a leverage point uh, was. Um, and not to use it, you know, to move beyond using it as 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 jargon, and to really use it as something that that meant something for them. Uh, another thing, just just to close that loop, that kind of goes uh, beyond the inception phase. But as you're implementing the the project, you know, particularly for TMS, because um, TMS is an anomaly in AID in terms of the length. Usually, our projects are five year activities. TMS is going to end up being a nine-year activity. Um, so we are in at the halfway point. We're in, in, in year five of implementation. <clears throat> and we realized that over 95% of the staff that we have right now, particularly in the technical teams, in the technical teams, it's, it's probably even higher, uh, was not part of TMS when we had that initial uh, uh, boot camp. So we, we just had a, a, a refresher earlier this year so that we could so that we could do that but but something as it relates to inception phases i think it's crucial and i think it really paid off for us in the long run having that uh, bootcamp early on thank you very much uh jorge um so now we know what makes for a recipe for success in inception phases holly what wouldn't contribute in your opinion like you've set me up to be the, the bad person here. I'm not sure I really like the term bad inception phase, but there are definitely programs that emerge from the inception phase with a clear understanding of their context, 
and the actors, as well as an energy and team dynamic that allows them to move quickly to start piloting and learning from a handful of smart interventions and projects that are not as well positioned. And for me, the difference really comes down to the investments the program makes in team capacity and relationship during the inception phase. And Jorge really picked up on that team capacity being really vital to a strong inception phase, and I would agree with that. The other piece I'll pick out here is on that relationship building. There can be a temptation to rush through training, to jump into market research. Um, and I find that the programs that do that, they go quick, but then they end up running into to challenges. I've seen projects have to redo their market systems analyses because they didn't apply a systems lens. There wasn't a shared under, understanding of what that actually meant. So not enough investment upfront. There's others that have had to go back to sector selection because they found themselves working in sectors which didn't have much scope or potential for change. And I think this is particularly relevant for MSD programs, which try to reach a specific segment like women, uh, youth, or want a specific outcome like green jobs. So in addition to developing that shared understanding of MSD, which is so crucial, the inception phase is also a unique time for team building. So for example, by integrating monitoring and evaluation staff into your MSA research process, you can set the tone for collaboration throughout the inception and into implementation. Inception is an important time for team members to find ways of working together, build trust with one another, and that's gonna serve them in the long term when things get more difficult. The other relationship that I wanna point out here that's really critical to develop during the inception phase is with your donor. MSD projects need space to try, fail, adapt, and this is only possible if you have a strong relationship with your donor. And the inception phase is a great time to get started with that. Bring them into strategic discussions around the vision, bring them into capacity building sessions. Actions like that is more likely to be able to create the space for, for failing, for succeeding, and will serve you in the long run. So in summary, bad inception phases are those that don't invest in building the foundation and relationships for the future. Clara? Thank you very much for that. Um, and I am mindful of time. I'm seeing some interesting questions that are coming through the Q&A box. Um, and so that we have time to answer them all, I would like to invite the three of you to provide a closing reflection um, with the purpose of answering a more philosophical question. So who are inception phases for in the context of an MSD program? And what should uh, contribute to determining their length and focus? If you have an opinion of that, maybe you don't, but yeah. Maybe we start with Elena. Thank you, Clara. I guess, um, yeah, indeed, it's for all parties involved. Um, the inception phases are for teams, uh, for partners, and uh, for donors. And when I think about the teams, um, very often we hire uh, people that are new to MSD approach um, and then it takes time to um, get comfortable with the uncertainty, get comfortable with the idea that you might fail <laughs> with some of the safe to fail experiments um, and um, also um, um, yeah, and then uh, achieve results um, and maybe in a bit of a longer uh, turn. So um, Indeed, it's not uh, that easy for teams, uh, but also for the partners, because when we approach partners, um, architectures and market systems development uh, um, approach, uh, we are not uh, prescribing the solutions, but we're, but we're co-creating. We're looking what makes sense for the market, what makes sense for the target group. And it's kind of also a process that takes time for um, um, organizations to uh, get comfortable with. And when it comes to uh, donors, I guess it's also to provide enough um, analysis and evidence of what could make sense uh, in the main phase and uh, uh, build expectations together. So in that sense, I would say that the length of the inception uh, does indeed depend on the context. It depends on the country. It depends how new the MSD approach is to the context. And in case of the regional market system development program, it's uh, completely new. So maybe more space uh, was needed. But one learning that I wanted to emphasize maybe is that uh, should, if, uh, should it have been clear from the very beginning how long it's going to be, that could have been a little bit easier for the teams to manage because indeed uh, the extensions, the changes were 
uh, a bit difficult for the team to manage, but we did show the resilience and adaptability in its true sense. So, yeah. So I guess it depends. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Lenny. Uh, Jorge? Yeah, so inception phases are for, uh, I, I think Elena alluded to this, but they're for all kinds of stakeholders, both internal and, 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 and external. Um, I think that also the the length of the inception phases is is very context specific. You know, I've had the opportunity uh, to see uh, different types of inception phases conducted uh, throughout Latin America for USAID projects, and uh, the the length and the complexity of the inception phases varies. So there's no one right way to, to do it, in, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's very much context specific and, um, and you can still get a, you can still get a, a, what you what you want. Um, one thing that's important in terms of uh, trying to, to, to have to add value, to get real value from the inception phase, at least in, in the TMS example, was, to use that as a time to reconfigure the relationships, the pre-existing relationships that the mission, the USAID mission, or that the people working for the project had with some of the stakeholders. Because when you're uh, implementing a, a project with an MSD approach, you know, with a very facilitative approach, a light touch approach, um, you want to help your partners move away from seeing themselves as contractors or grant implementers and really come into, into the pilots uh, seeing themselves as, as uh, true partners for, for us. Thank you very much, Jorge. And last but not least, Halib, do you have anything to add? Yeah, sure, I, I think just to echo what Elena and Jorge have said, context and objectives will determine um, you know, the length and uh, the length of the, the inception phase. Thank you very much, all, and thank you for keeping it on time. Um, this was very interesting, and I'm also seeing that there's some interesting questions coming through the Q&A box. Uh, I'm, I don't think we need to take them in order. We're going to answer them all. Uh, while we answer them, maybe Valbona, can you just specify what you meant by financial analysis? And in the meantime, um, Jorge. Can you answer Pascal's questions from Luke's dev? He's wondering how one can manage to keep agile in the inception phase. Uh, he echoes what you said about failing cheap and failing fast, but how do you measure success and failure? What's your take on that? That's a very good question. And whoever tells you that they have completely figured that one out is, is uh, not being honest. Uh, what, one thing that I tried to, to allude to was that very often, in our experience at least, uh, the, the results, like the, the quantitative results for the, for the indicator that can be measured through the um, indicators that, that we have for TMS, take a while to come in. So we're really looking at the process and uh, we have figured out ways in which we can uh, measure uh, in a way the health of our relationships. So if, we're, if we see that uh, the aspects that we have determined that constitute a healthy relationship are there, that there's good communication, that we can have a, you know, a partner participation, uh, that they are in, uh, uh, holding true to their commitments, both in terms of uh, work and resources invested. Uh, those can give us an idea that this is a partnership that is moving in the right direction. Also, you can you can set you can you can look at the roadmap and see okay if if I'm ultimately gonna get at my at my I'm going to achieve my ultimate goal. These are the things that are going to happen along the way that are going to alert me that I'm on on the right track. So determining those 
intermediate uh, signs of success. Uh, you can develop uh, sentinel indicators. You can develop uh, other, you know, use context indicators to see if, if you're on the right path. Um, we have tried different approaches um, and, and uh, in, in many cases, we have been able to, I would say, pull the, pull the plug, even, even when it has been a, a, a hard decision to terminate some partnerships, but able to, to do that. And in some cases, go back and try to see if we can reconfigure the partnership and, and make it work. Thank you, Jorge. Um, another question that we had came from Arvid Shariar. Uh, I'm going to address this one to Holly. Um, so when it comes to conducting Jesse gender and social inclusion research, uh, do you, can you share any best practices or any firsthand experience uh, in terms of what constitutes good Jesse analysis? Sure, I'll, I'll share too. Uh, and to be honest, I would say this is one of the areas that programs have typically struggled in the most. And the first reason is it's not clear that Jesse is everyone's responsibility. And this is something I'm very fond of saying on every MSD program, Jesse is everyone's responsibility. Because if it's not, if it's done as an add-on or a check the box exercise, it really affects the quality of analysis and understanding of those market dynamics. And so really it's starting from the beginning, and this is what we talked about a lot in the inception phase, is making sure in those capacity building exercises that every team member understands what's being asked of them has the capability to conduct this research um, and really sees part of their success, part of the quality of the MSA being really linked to the presentation, the understanding of those inclusion dynamics. The other piece I'll point out here that's also very critical as part of that and really can determine success or failure is something that Eleni and Jorge have mentioned as well. You know, inclusion means different things on different projects. And it's also sometimes a moving target. So being very clear in the beginning or going on and updating your, your, your understanding as the project goes along, demystifying for your team members what it means when we talk about Jesse, being very clear about which groups we're explicitly trying to reach is really going to be essential to helping team members take on that responsibility and opportunity to incorporate Jesse analysis into their research. Thank you very much. And thanks also to Valbona for uh, providing some more. Um... Oh, I didn't notice that someone has their hand up. Um, so Arvid has their hand up. Um, please, if you want to react to what Holly just shared, proceed. Sorry, Holly, this is Bidora Khan. I asked the Jesse question. I just realized I logged in from my son's account. So that's why it is showing Arvid. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, for your response. Thank you, everyone. This is going great. Oh, okay. Sorry, I had gotten your name wrong. That's my bad. Um, all right. So thank you, Valbona. Nice to see you virtually again. Elena, I think you've seen Valbona's question and also her explanation. So for those of you who haven't, Valbona is asking, what is our experience with financial economic analysis, uh, which during the inception phase might lead to findings which are not uh, conducive to the success of the project. And she explained that it, she looks at it or she meant it from a cost benefit analysis. So Elene, what uh, can you share? Thanks a lot, Clarence. And thanks a lot, Valbona, for the question. Um, I think I touched it lightly in the presentation uh, when we talked about the inception phase and what the inception phases are for. Uh, and for me, the question is um, about uh, testing the, the pilots and understanding what works and what doesn't work for the target group. And indeed, it is from the economic, social, and environmental point of view. So are we able to create uh, the inclusive and distant jobs for the target group through the pilots that we are uh, trying out? 
out in the inception. And uh, for that, I guess the process of co-design is also very important when we're trying to assess the ability uh, and the willingness of the market actors to innovate, to introduce new products uh, to the market and invest their own resources. So in a way, before going forward, we are looking at what are the capacities of partners and if there is enough of motivation from the market actor to actually drive the change, because we believe that uh, it's not the project that should be imposing uh, the change uh, and uh, the development of the new products on the private sector, but it should be coming from the private sector. And then we are buying out a little bit of the risk in that case. And of course, still with having all the precautions in place and all the due diligence and checks uh, before you start an intervention, it still happens that something doesn't work. But then going back to the uh, whole concept of the inception phase and safe to fail experiments, we need to make sure that we are not investing a lot of resources in, into something that might not prove feasible uh, for the main phase for the scaling uh, up and et cetera, and et cetera. So in that um, sense to the question that whether it happens, it does, but then uh, this is uh, where the choice of what is it that we are scaling up comes in and what is it that we are uh, ready to drop um, as a project uh, is uh, in place as well. So I hope I addressed uh, the question, <laughs> Albona, thanks. Okay. Um, there's another question, and maybe uh, Masie can, um, if he wants, ask it live. Uh, I think it has to do with the minimum expectations that donors have as to the outcomes of inception phases, but maybe you can ask it yourself, Masie, and we will make sure you, we answer it. Uh, thank you, Clara. Yeah, so just my observations, especially after what Holly said about positioning relationship building as like a base indicator of your outcome of your inception phase. And I think it's a luxury that I think some projects have a two and a half year inception phase. And that's also, it comes with a double-edged sword because you have so much to actually accomplish in those two and a half years. But uh, when you're coming from a project that maybe has three months, which I just started up a project recently, an MSD project in Juba, and we have a year to kind of prove ourselves, but the three months we've dedicated to a, to inception phase. And we also have the luxury of being our own donor because we're putting our own money into it. So we don't necessarily have an outside donor to to um, to have question, or question us. But when it comes to a donor like USAID or CEDA, how do you justify that length? But then at the same time, how what is your bare minimum of an outcome for the inception phase? And I think maybe this is a question geared towards Jorge, because I do have a lot of experience with USAID, and I would actually just be really interested to know how you actually convinced your um, your management around that those types of issues, and how do you actually get people to be really convinced around that, and what is the bare minimum of, you know, of success for this types of activity? Thank you. Thank you. That's a that's a really good question. Uh, uh, Again, I, I try to be nothing in what I'm sharing, if not honest. Uh, and I, I would really like to tell you that I have, uh, you know, great communication skills and an awesome power to convince people to do something that they didn't want to do. But the truth of the matter is that uh, our, our mission was primed for this type of activity because we were coming off 20 uninterrupted years of Feed the Future programming that was extremely successful in terms of achieving the results that uh, the that the indicator set in uh, as, as far as targets go. Uh, but the minute that the money from the donor, in this case AID, stopped coming in, the results also stopped. So we had mission leadership who said, when we were designing TMS, they actually threw the, the gauntlet to us and they said, come to us with an approach that is going to lead towards maybe not as, as much results early on, like there's some willingness to sacrifice results in the next year or so, maybe even a couple of years, but we want to set something up that is going to be more sustainable in the long run and that has a greater opportunity to continue after the project has ended. And so, so that's what I mean when I said that the conditions were, were right in Honduras uh, to present this kind of activity. Like, uh, like all of us, you know, Elaine and Holly said this as well in during the panel, 
Um, it's super context specific. Uh, I can't think that in the aftermath of the transition from one administration to the other, or or even in the context of the pandemic, when you know there were so many jobs that were being lost, that as much patience would have been had with us if we said, okay, so our flagship private sector competitiveness activity is, is going to really start implementing um, in 10 months. Um, so it's it's very context specific. One thing that I that I will say makes that cell a little bit more appealing, because even, even in the context of having a mission director that is that is really looking for this type of approach, there are still people that need convincing. So two things that that helped us was as a donor, we were very uh, explicit in a request for proposal in terms of saying we we want offerers that are going to submit proposals to tell us what are some opportunities for early wins. So what are some of these opportunities that you see in the in the Honduran economy that could allow us to have some kind of impact and some kind of results in the first couple uh, in the first year while we're still conducting uh, the inception phase and also the pilots. Uh, you know, we we set up uh, a, a robust fund. You know, typically you have USAID activities dedicate somewhere between ten to fifteen percent of of the total amount of the uh, of the project for for grants and such, which is what we ended up using for for our partnerships. In TMS, we increased that to thirty percent because we really wanted to have a fund that would allow us to take. Uh, different shots and to have a, a, a very diverse portfolio. So those pilots and those early wins can help you um, negotiate the patience that is needed so that you can do the inception phase and 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 wait for the results as they're coming in. Thank you very much, uh, Jorge. Since we don't have any more live questions, um, I wanna thank everyone who submitted questions online before this webinar. And one interesting one I would like to ask Holly to answer comes from Jacob Gray from Environmental Incentives in USA. So his question is, what to do when co-creation during inception phases generate ideas, solutions, or interventions which do not align, align with donor priorities or perceptions. Thanks, Clara. I feel like you're you're stacking me up with all the easy questions on today's webinar. Um, but it's a, it's a really good question. Um, I think ultimately, you know, as, as I said before, having that relationship with the donor is paramount because as we know, it can take several years to, to, to produce the types of results that development projects are used to producing. And so having that relationship, being able to talk through what you're seeing, what you're not seeing is really important. And if you can't find that common ground from the beginning, Beginning, it's going to be incredibly difficult to have those open and honest conversations because, to be honest, some things won't be looking very good for some time. Um, and so, I, I do think you know, probably within some, maybe on maybe on certain points, there's maybe not an alignment. But I would really encourage to, uh, programs to really find that common ground and build from there. And then also to use a bit of kind of MSC, uh, uh, MSD speak, I think we should really, another recommendation would be to unpack the assumptions around the reasons, around this kind of divergence in opinion. You know, what is it about the donor and the implementing partner and how they're, how they have, what their worldview is related to these, these challenges during the co-creation process? Because I think if you unpack that, it will be an, also be a, a way for you to find more common ground. I think, you know, sometimes, a lot of times I, what I find in MSD programs, I'll, this will all end on is saying, you know, we go back to what we feel the most comfortable. And as soon as we find that we run into maybe walls or kind of disagreement between different parties, we're going to go back to our, our base position of direct delivery. And so I really think it's worth, worth it to take the time. And I know co-creation is about trying to unpack these assumptions, but we shouldn't leave it just there. We should continue to try to understand each other and find that alignment because ultimately we are trying to solve some of the world's most complex problems. And the more support and, um, and allyship we have for that, the easier it's going to be. Thank you, Holly. And as you were speaking, I completely agree with you. And I would say 
that that uh, divergence may also happen if the program design has happened way before the actual procurement takes place and things change very fast in certain contexts where we operate. So yeah, there, it's also a point where we're inviting or we're working with actors in the market and they're telling us that maybe the situation has changed. It's also important for us to inform the donor that what they think maybe is the case is no longer the case. Uh, and I completely agree with what you mentioned. Now, um, a question that also came uh, through online was from Igor Mishevsky from the Impact Foundation. His question is, if the during the inception phase, you have proof of the viability of a business model, should that be replicated in the main phase? Elene, would you feel okay answering this question? Yeah, sure. Thanks, <laughs> Clara. Um... Well, uh, it's a very good question. Thank you, Igor. Um, well, the purpose of inception phase is indeed to learn what works and what doesn't. But we also should uh, treat the question of replicability, scale up, crowding in a bit carefully, because uh, we still operate in different contexts, we work in different sectors, we work with different market actors. So in that sense, I think what we need to be very clear from the beginning about is uh, that the team is capacitated and has a good uh, strategy for how the replication will work. So have a replication strategy in a way. Also look at like how crowding in can be stimulated by the program and there are enough resources for doing that. But uh, we also believe that business models should not be directly copied and pasted from one context to the other or from one intervention to the other. They should serve uh, the learning purpose and they should serve uh, the ability of the team to then pick out, learn, replicate and change and yeah, like support the scalable change, but not one-to-one. -one. I wouldn't say that um, it's something that needs to be done in that way, because uh, as we also know that the context is changing uh, the and something that has worked today might not be then applicable in several years, because uh, we might have some context changes around and maybe the market has adopted on its own many things already. So I would not uh, put it one-to-one, -one, but certainly we need to take a, uh, the learnings and then move on with them for the larger change. Thanks. Thank you, Elena. And my little behind the scenes facilitation, I don't know if Jorge saw the message I sent him, but <laughs> uh, I have a question that maybe Jorge can answer, but if not, uh, the other two uh, panelists are more than welcome to doing so. Um, Hayden Aronson from ACDI Voca submitted a question asking, what are some good strategies for running fast-tracked partnerships alongside inception analysis? And what processes have you synthesized, used for synthesizing analysis down to a systems change strategy? Um, which I think is a really interesting question. Uh, and all of you mentioned the importance of using the inception phase to both test and do and learn. So, Jorge, would you be okay answering this question? I can take a crack at it and, and hopefully leave some time so that in case Ellen or, or Holly want to add something, they, they can. Um, I think that in, in, um, in TMS, uh, one thing that like I mentioned in the uh, in, a, in a previous uh, question in the during the Q and A uh, phase, we we needed to we needed to to identify interventions that we could that we could pilot, um, and uh, and some of them ended up being a very a very some of them ended up being very clearly uh, primed for for being scaled up. Uh, from from the jump, um, and uh, gain momentum as factors uh, in the in in the Honduran context, and sometimes even in the in the con in, in the world context uh, shifted. One that comes to mind, for example, was we had a partnership, and and we knew that one of the areas where we wanted to work was in developing 
the capability of entrepreneurs and small and medium enterprises to be able to conduct e-commerce because that was something that we had identified early on in the inception phase as a way for you know to to promote growth uh, and to bring some of these businesses from the informal sector over to the formal sector which was something that we really wanted to to try to promote um, so what the thing that changed in in terms of the context is the pandemic is the covid-19 pandemic because that kind of uh, that kind of capability became you know went from being a nice to have went from being something that could provide a competitive edge to something that every everyone that was in the private sector needed to become proficient on on the fly so that let us know that we needed to significantly scale up this this activity even as the results of the initial pilot phase were still coming in uh, so there are some things in the in the context that uh, can really let you know that you need to put some of the pilots that you have on on a fast track so that you can scale them up and 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 bring them to a wider audience uh, earlier than you expected in some cases. I don't know if Holly or Elaine want to add something. I think if Holly wants to, I would just invite her to also take into account Lucas' question that he put on the Q and A part because it's similar and you've covered part of it, I think, Jorge. But maybe um, or Elaine, I don't know. I can jump in on this one uh, quickly. I think there's two sides to the equation. One is the tone that's set by the leadership of the program and what they show in terms of communicating, demonstrate what they value. Do they value uh, team members getting out and having conversations with market actors? If so, you'll see that show up in terms of how they run their meetings. And then I think the other side to the equation is the donor. Are they going to value this type of uh, piloting action research? Because sometimes there can be an obstacle in trying this, uh, in promoting this type of approach and want to see only these robust MSAs prior to any action. So I think it's really those two sides of the, the equation and will lead you to more action research and more energized inception phases. Let's be honest, it can be a long, long time if you don't have these opportunities for experimentation uh, and partnership along the way. Thank you very much. Um, I say, Elena, unless you want to react to Daniel's message there? Yes, maybe very quickly, because uh, the way I read the question is indeed the like how we interpret uh, the same thing. So in a way, uh, we call inception what uh, Daniel calls the pilot. And then uh, like we call what works, what doesn't work. Uh, in other words, what may fail and what may fly, you know. So in, in that sense, I would just say that uh, we're talking about the same thing, but with a bit of a uh, different terminology. Uh, but uh, indeed, the piloting phase or inception phase is to try to understand uh, and test uh, pilots and then see what uh, works and uh, what, okay, I'm using again what works and what doesn't, but yes. <laughs> Thank so, you. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. And obviously in MSD program, the, we pilot continuously and we iterate, but like it, the inception phase is a really good way of just making sure that we have proof of concept of some ideas. Uh, Mike, over to you. I think we're, we have one minute left. Thank you, panelists, by the way. It was great. Yes, thank you. All, all the, some of the really interesting questions have kind of come at the very last minute moment, don't they? Um, we could talk a lot, I think, about those those um, questions that Daniel and, and Luca raised at the end there. But we haven't got time, unfortunately. So um, thank you, all of you, um, Clara, Elena, and Holly, and, and Jorge, for your great presentation.